Hello and welcome back to another interesting video of research and publishing series of Explore Bio. Whether you are an early researcher or about to complete your PhD, presenting your research in the form of a poster has huge significance and impact on your scientific and academic career. In today's video, you will learn about the benefits of presenting a research poster, its structure or components, what is an ideal layout of a poster and finally how to format a poster in a way to grab the attention of the audience. I have gone through dozens of articles to make this video and I have tried to cover almost everything you would need to know to make a perfect poster. At last there would be a self-assessment test for you. So without skipping watch the video till the end. Let's get started with the benefits of a poster. A research poster is a great way to showcase your research to the scientific community at a conference. Researchers can find right people to collaborate for further research. It helps a professor to find a suitable student and vice versa. When you present your research poster, you can get useful suggestions from audience to improve your work or future directions for subsequent research. Poster presentation not only improves your data compilation skills but also your speaking and listening skills. Also poster presentation or attending conferences can be an essential criteria for the fulfillment of doctorate degree. So now you know the importance of a research poster. Let's see what is the structure or a general format of a research poster. Usually a poster has a short relevant title of your work which is followed by the authors who has performed the research and their affiliations. You can optionally add the conference and university logo and your photograph as well, although it is not mandatory. Start with the background or introduction to make the audience aware of your topic. Abstract or summary is usually not advised to be included as the poster itself summarizes the work. Mention the methods followed in brief. For methodology, you can also use flowchart for easy understanding and visibility. Next, you mention the results which is the heart of your poster. Include figures and tables of most important experiments and informative results. Remember that results cover maximum portion of a poster. In the next section, you can write the conclusions or the key takeaways. In the acknowledgement section, acknowledge the funding agencies, people who have provided material or other such help. Next, mention the most important papers referred following proper formatting style. You can also mention your contact details such as your phone number or email ID or other such information in case someone wants to contact you. Now let's learn about the layout of a poster. Follow the poster guidelines if provided by the conference organizers. Determine the orientation of the poster whether it's a landscape or portrait and also the dimension of the poster. This is very very important to remember you do not want your poster to look over or undersized and get rejected by the evaluators just because of this and reduce your chances to get the best poster award. You can make a poster in Microsoft PowerPoint or Publisher or other such application. These are the examples of posters in landscape layout. Just remember that it is easy for the audience to read your poster from top to bottom and left to right direction. Your whole poster should be partitioned in two to four well separated columns. This is another landscape layout where you can have a single big portion for results. Just remember that the text you write should not be too long in its width as it make it difficult to read. Rather separate the text in separate lines with narrow width. This is a portrait layout of a poster if asked by the conference organizing committee. All the sections and headings remain the same. You can also make your own QR code that may be a link to your lab page or research article for more details about the work you presented in the poster. Now let's talk about formatting a poster. First I will talk about formatting the text. Try to write in short bullet points rather than writing paragraphs. Bullets are easy to be read. Choose an easily readable font type such as Arial or sans serif. Ideally the text portion in a poster should be about 20 to 25 percent. A lot 35 to 40 percent space for figures or tables. 
remaining space should be kept as empty. This way your poster would look clear and less crowded. Font size should be such that the poster could be read from a distance of at least 5 feet. Unless specified, the font size of the title should be in the range of 72 to 80 points as the title is the first thing that draws the attention. Headings can be 36 to 48 points, subheadings and author name can be 28, body text and affiliations can be 24 points, captions, footnotes and contact details can be 18 points. Keep the text left aligned rather than justified as justified text creates unnecessary spacing between the words. Try to keep the text language simple yet scientific, minimizing the use of jargons. Make important information to stand out. But for this, do not capitalize each letter, rather you can bold or italicize the text for more emphasis. Each section of the poster should be properly spaced. For easy readability, the line spacing should be minimum of 1.25. A good poster has maximum 2 to 3 colors except for figures you make. Also, choose right color combinations. If the background is dark, use contrasting light color for the text. And similarly, if you are using a light background, keep the text dark. This leads to better visibility of your poster. Try to keep the background solid or a little of gradient. Avoid using vibrant colors and distracting pictures. Figures should be of high resolution and should not appear blurry at 100% zoom. Now it's time for some bonus tips. Before actually making a poster using some software, make a draft outline on a paper. For a poster, focus just on a single aspect of your research. This will make easy for the audience to understand what your poster is about. Accordingly, frame a title, write the background, include relevant results, figures, tables, and key takeaway messages. Making a great poster takes time. Devote at least one week time for poster making. Make a poster that is clutter free and less crowded. Use lesser text. Your effort should be to make it easily readable, understandable and attractive to grab the audience attention. Choose a reference format that requires less space. After completing the poster, proofread it several times. Give it to your colleagues and supervisor to find out mistakes and suggest necessary improvements. Take an A4 size printout of the poster to check overall layout and formatting. Once everything is final, you can take out the final full size printout on glossy or a semi glossy paper sheet for a more professional look. Do not forget to borrow a poster case for this. Else you can get it printed on a flex material if you want to fold it. But its overall quality may not be that good. Now that you have learned about how to make a perfect poster for a conference, I want you to have a look at these posters and find out what makes them a poor poster and mention the problems in the comment. This will help you remember important points related to poster making. Pause the video and have a critical look at these posters. With this, I hope you got a complete idea about how to make a perfect poster. In my next video, I will be talking about how to give a great poster presentation. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, do subscribe and hit the bell icon to get informed about my latest uploads. If you like the information, do not forget to share it with others. Do check out my other videos on research and publishing, markers, techniques, genomics, plant tissue culture and others. Thanks and see you in my another video.